So you're sitting at home or you're sitting in class and you're just thinking to yourself, why do some people get this stuff? Why does it come intuitively to some people? Why are they able to, I guess, kind of connect the dots in a way that I can't? Why am I memorizing and they're understanding? That's a huge question in math. And it's, it's kind of one that everybody wants to know the answer to because, every, because nobody wants to memorize. And I want to make this video to talk about that. Well, first I want to talk about who I am. I'm a mathematics major at UCF. Go Knights! But I've also done mathematics competition and tutoring both at the high school and collegiate level. And it's just unfortunate that learning how to learn is just not something that's really taught in class. I mean, you can learn it on YouTube, you can find great videos by great creators, and I want to give a little bit of my insights to what I've seen over the years, and so that's why I'm starting this channel, and that's what I want this video to be about today. Everybody I've talked to about mathematics who doesn't really like the subject, and I ask them why. They always say, well, it's just too much memorization, or uh, I don't see where it all fits together, or I just don't know where it's going to be used later in life, which I guess is a separate conversation all on its own. But unfortunately, that's just the way the system's set up. It's past this class, past this class, and past this class, but there's not an emphasis on creating a firm foundation because everything in mathematics is all hierarchical. Everything is a prerequisite to everything else. And if you have that shaky foundation, you're not gonna do good because all these concepts transfer over when it comes to higher levels math. And that's not even you know looking at like stuff on the collegiate level, talking about advanced calculus, abstract algebra. Oh, we haven't even gotten there yet. But there is a silver lining to this and to this subject. And it's that everything is derived. Nothing is handed down on high. No formula comes out of nowhere, even though it seems like it, right? If you just, if you look at that formula sheet or you hear from a professor who writes it on the board, right? Maybe it might come out of nowhere there, but there is a place where it comes from and it is so beneficial to know where that is. It changes the way that you remember that because now it, it's, it's really not memorization. Really, it becomes something that's obvious or intuitive and you don't need to memorize anything at all and you slowly start to change the way that you think about this subject because now your brain your mind knows that what it's learning is non-arbitrary material let me give you an example let's put this camera down here I'll give you an example. if you haven't made it to trig yet i'm so sorry but if you are past trig you know this formula but can you remember back to the first day that you learned this formula you thought well that kind of seems a little bit random it seems a little bit arbitrary why is this not sine theta plus cosine theta equals one. Why is this not anything else? Why is it not sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared equals one? Why not? It seems right, right? Like th it just seems arbitrary. Why couldn't it have been any of these things? Well, if you know where it comes from, it couldn't be less arbitrary. Let's take a shift in the perspective. We're going to change things to a geometric perspective. We're going to go ahead and draw a unit circle here. Yeah, that's pretty all right. Now we're going to go ahead and define an angle theta, and we're going to drop that perpendicular. Let's do my pen swap here. We're going to define that angle theta by definition. This has side length of 1. By definition, this has side length of sine theta. And by definition, this has side length of cosine theta. All we need to do is to take this triangle that we've drawn and apply Pythagorean theorem. When we do that, we get, well, we get sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared, a squared and b squared is one squared. And term by term, that's the exact same as the formula. And now it becomes incredibly obvious where this came from and it couldn't be it couldn't be less abstract or less arbitrary and to be honest i feel like you're gonna have a hard time forgetting this i hope you find that you know kind of lovely kind of beautiful kind of insightful just organic in a way and so this is how algebra is a little bit different from you know like a communications class because there is no right in a communication class you'd learn maybe like uh, the four uh, four phases of conversation or something like that, you know, but it's like why four? Why not three? Why not five? Well, it's just what psychologists and textbook authors have chosen over the years. It may make sense, but at the end of the day, it's really an arbitrary distinction between here to here to here to here, you know, if there's like four phases of that. With mathematics, it's just not like that. There's really no arbitrary decisions. There are axioms, right? We axiomatize lines and points. We bring their existence in but from there, everything else, everything regarding 
um, creating perpendicular lines and all these like lemmas and theorems, they're all built upon these axioms, right? They're not invented. It's really a creation of knowledge in a hierarchical structure. And once you see that, once you understand that, then the primary goal becomes creating connections, not necessarily memorizing. The learning happens when you create connections between these layers, between these nodes, and when you stop focusing so much on the memorization. Now, you might not be able to understand intuitively everything. When I was taking my advanced calculus class last semester, uh, there were just some things that if I wanted to understand it intuitively, I would have had to spend six or eight hours on just that concept. And it's just not worth the time. I mean, unless you're going into like some PhD in mathematics, right? Then you really do need to understand it. But you also have to, you have to work on balancing your times, right? Remember to focus on understanding the core, central concepts. That is an identity that you will use in pre-calculus. You will use it in calculus, right? You will be doing trig integrals. You will use it with differential equations. That comes up everywhere. And so if you don't know that or if you just know it as a formula i mean you might be able to succeed but it's you're going to miss out on the opportunity for the intuition to kick in and so if you do this stuff right then it ends up becoming like a like that xkcd comic where they you talk about the password it's like uh you know correct staple battery horse right and oh god over the years i've just remembered those four words because i literally can't forget it and it's kind of the same way with uh, some of these fundamental formulas and some of these fundamental concepts you just can't forget it if you learn it properly if you understand it well hey thank you all so much for watching if you do appreciate the content i would appreciate your subscription uh it means a lot and i'm um, starting kind of a, a new concept here on the channel i'm kind of switching the theme switching the niche and i think this is something that's going to be really beneficial um i'd love to post more of this content and if you have any questions you want to know um maybe my insight on a certain direction just just leave it in the comments i'll address it in a future video uh, but for now, that is everything, and I wish you all the best of luck. I'll see you in the next one.